One of my biggest compulsions is wondering if I've locked the door at night. I get up and I check to see if I've locked the door. And I'll go back to bed and I wonder if I've really checked. It's like this never ending hamster wheel that I can't get off of because I'm literally spinning. My name is Courtney Patlin. I'm a graduate student of psychology and I struggle with OCD. One of the things that we were all doing in the beginning was washing your groceries down, which I was neurotic about. I would wipe down my cereal boxes, my milk, anything. The smell of bleach is just still so comforting to me. I would spread it all over the kitchen counter. I would spread it on the walls. If someone coughed outside my window, I would just run to the window and shut it. I didn't know where the COVID was. Where is it? Did I breathe it? Did I not? COVID has definitely blurred the lines of like what's real and what's fake for me with uh, OCD. There was also like this weird feeling of like people joining me. Like now you'll kind of understand what, what I've been through my whole life. When I was a kid, I never wanted to eat cake that people had blown on. I had always thought that was weird. Why would we eat a piece of cake that you literally had droplets of your spit on? And I was kind of hoping that the world would become this clean little bubble that I could hang out in. If I have a clean apartment, it means that I'm right in the world. It means that I have some moral value. It means that I am accepted. It's, I feel, I get filled with shame if something's dirty, you know? I, it's overpowering the shame I feel. I feel like everyone sees me or knows my secret. You know, the biggest misconception about OCD is that it is like just about hand washing or having things neat and labeled. And it's something that's so broad. There's different types. There's harm OCD, there's contamination, there's postpartum OCD, where a lot of mothers get fear around harming their babies. There's hoarding OCD, religious OCD, pure OCD, which is just obsessions without compulsions. There's relationship OCD, where you're obsessed with your relationship. When this started, a lot of people were concerned with the germs of the pandemic but being solitary affects mental health. I'm a single woman, I'm 28. I live in an apartment by myself. I don't think I was this trapped in my mind before the pandemic. I think the fact that we haven't had a lot of interactions has made my OCD kind of come back in a big way. I don't know what's a real interaction anymore. I'm very unpracticed now. I'll spend a day thinking about what someone has said to me. I'll spend hours trying to come up with a response to someone's text. It's like I'm trapped in my mind, trying to create the best social situation where I can feel acceptable and loved. One of my biggest compulsions is wondering if I've locked the door at night. I get up and I check to see if I've locked the door. Now I'll go back to bed and I wonder if I've really checked. It's like this never ending hamster wheel that I can't get off of because I'm literally spinning. I'm spinning around my apartment and I'm spinning in my head. And I'm just caught in this loop of like second guessing myself, touching the door to see if it's locked, getting back in bed. And it's, you know, pulling the fire alarm when there's no fire. All the sirens are going off and the ambulance coming and it, it feels like my body's gonna explode. I'm actually really interested to see what my OCD does when I get back into the world. How nervous am I gonna get? How clean is this? How long will this vaccine last? I feel like these are normal things to think about, but when you have OCD, you're thinking about them for weeks straight and you're thinking about them at such a fast speed. OCD really wants security. 
OCD really wants control. I think that's what, like, at the end of the day, OCD is trying to get me, is love and security. But I'm trying to go about finding love in the weirdest ways. <laughs> 